First, I learned a long time ago that if you're the speaker between food and your audience, it's always a good idea to say very little. Secondly, I'm not sure you need to hear a fourth presentation after having heard three really excellent ones. You know, I have to say, as someone who has, has worked geopolitically uh, for a long time, I too, like Stuart, was uh, someone who dealt with the Indians through a lens of non-alignment. And I used to always be told things can't change very much. Uh, one was because of the Muslim population. Two was because of the significant number of Indians who work in Arab countries uh, and, uh, and basically represent a significant source of income. So to be here now and to look at where the relationship has come is actually quite stunning. Uh, I applaud the book because what the book represents is also the eye at its best. It identifies an area. It offers an analysis that really hasn't been seen before. It offers a pathway to the future. And it points out what is really a new set of openings. Uh, and in fact, when one thinks about India and Israel today, uh, one of the really striking things that Stuart was getting at, here's the world's biggest democracy creating a fundamentally different kind of relationship with Israel. Uh, I'm often struck by some of the comparisons that are made. The relationship that China and Israel have is a significant one, but it's exclusively economic. It doesn't, in a sense, translate into any other areas. And yet the relationship with India is across the board. Uh, not surprisingly, given what India represents, not surprisingly, given the fact that uh, Israel may be the startup nation, but when one looks at India, one sees enormous advances uh, in technology, and it's a natural fit between the two. So when I look at this, this upcoming visit, what I see is, as you said, Mark, a historic point. And to use the word historic here is not bombastic. It's actually just a statement of fact. This is a relationship that now, if we look at what, where things have come in the last 25 years, in the last five years, one can only look forward to the next five years uh, and anticipate in the sequel to your book, uh, where things actually stand. And if some of the recommendations that, that you were making about enhancing the academic exchanges, taking advantage of the, uh, the Israeli Indian population, these really do open up, I think, new vistas and new pathways. So I, I look at the upcoming visit as something that represents a strategic turning point. And one of the things that's most striking to me that India is proceeding understanding that this is not only in its interest, but that it hasn't harmed India's relationship with this region. As someone who has written a book about some of the assumptions that guided too many American administrations about what would happen to our relations with the Arabs if we did certain things with the Israelis, uh, and it turned out historically every time we did something, what was predicted never happened, it is interesting that India has adopted a pathway reflecting what it knew was in its interest and also that many of the Arab countries would understand what was also in their interests. So I applaud the upcoming visit, I applaud the book, and I say time to eat. Thank you.